Welcome heavy equipment enthusiasts. I'm with Holger from Hexagon Aleka Geosystems and he's going to show us great technology right now. Glad to meet you Holger. Thank you, thank you. It's good to have you here. A pleasure. What is Leica Geosystems all about? Well, Hexagon Leica Geosystem has a variety of construction technology solutions. And what makes us kind of very different um, from that perspective is we offer solutions that start very early in the project, you know, where you're still in the surveying stage and you, you take, uh, you know, measurement of the actual topography. Then we move into the preparation of the site. We move into then uh, machine control for, for the various dosing, grading, excavating explications, all the way to then how do you take care of the infrastructure? How do you monitor a road or a building once it is finished? What is behind uh, us? Behind us is an actual project. So this is a project we helped a, a small company in Austria build a, like a really nice residential area. So this is a site where they built a, a lake um, with some with some housing, it started from a potato field, and then they had to take uh, uh, all the steps to turning this into development, which is not totally finished yet, but it will be soon. Would you like to yeah. demonstrate? We brought the table here is because we couldn't take everybody to Austria. <laughs> but what you what well, what you see here is is using some of our point cloud solutions. Let's say here for the documentation, you see like the early stages, you know, where none of the excavation has happened. We see things moving forward then in terms of here we see some of the initial earth moving. Um, then uh, closer, 11 months in, this is finished. But I think the most important part here about geo-referencing this site is this design model. Um, the design model is important for two reasons. Uh, it is important because these designs will need to be downloaded on the equipment so an excavator knows how much to cut. Or, or how much to fill, you know, depending where you are on the site. Uh, the second reason why this is important, you want to compare this design to the current one and the difference is the earths you have to move. So we have, we have a number of technologies that allow you then to identify how much material do I need to move? Where do I need to move it? Do I fill, do I cut? Is it 100,000 cubic meter or a million cubic meter? And so that in terms of the you know, costing, timing, capacity planning, those are very important elements um, of what you need on that site. What's the next step? Where do we go from here? We can start with some of the surveying technology you would use to actually define, okay, what does it look like today? And then we will look into some of the machine control solutions so we help the machines shape the landscape. Okay, Holger, let's, let's go. do it. Let's do it. Here we have one of our smart antennas. This is, this is one of the products we've launched here at Bauma. Uh, this is a fascinating piece of equipment and I think it brings a lot of the, the uh, construction serving technology and democratizes it to the point that, you know, a normal construction worker, somebody who makes money like a moving dirt, can go out now and has a, a multitude of tasks they can do to, to take topography on the landscape and define the work that needs to be done on the site. So what we have here is an antenna. You can take this antenna off. You can put it on your truck. If you want to drive over the side, you can put it on the machine later on. So the machine also is geospatially aware. And here you can do a number of measuring tasks for surfaces. If you want to define a slope, you want to define volumes. This is a very, very important step early in a construction project so you know what needs to be done. But it comes back towards the end of a construction project so you can check is have I done what I was supposed to do? Because, you know, uh, uh, that's kind of important if you want to get paid. Quality control, right? Quality control for, for, for everybody. Okay, all good. Now, now from here, then I want to quickly show you, I think that the most important part in terms of how people get paid. <laughs> people get yes. paid for moving dirt. Then in between the current topography and what it needs to be, yeah. you need to have an understanding of the material that needs to be moved the volumes that need to be moved, an understanding of, well, if I need to fill material, how much material is it? How much do I need to bring in? How much can I use existing material? Uh, the usage of existing material on a site is not only important economically, it's important from a sustainability perspective. The more you move material around, the more resources you consume, and the more trucks move on and off a site that is fuel, that is machine hours, that has an impact. Manpower also, yeah. 
once you have this here, you can use this information now and you can program your construction equipment. Because now I want an excavator to dig this particular area and move the dirt. So let's let's go and see that. If it has let's go. Okay, Holger, what do we have here? It looks like a video game. This is like <laughs> <laughs> when we were kids. It, it is a little bit in terms of, you know, a lot of the functionality now on a machine is electronics. So you can actually simulate it with a, with a game controller. Um, but I think what is actually more exciting is this part here. This is the panel an operator would find on a machine. And when I say operator, we think about a variety of applications. You know, what you, you find on a construction site, you find dozing, uh, you find uh, drilling, you find the grading, you find excavation, right? And, and every time within these uh, various applications, you have a certain amount of material that needs to be transformed, moved, laid, excavated. And so we've seen before now how that, that end model is a kind of a geo-referenced uh, sort of um, program of lines. What we do is then we use that and you either with a USB stack or a cloud enabled, you would then load this on this equipment and now this panel and along with the machine becomes geospatially aware. Next to this, you have a variety of sensors. So, so think of this as like me being, a, let's say, an excavator. Yeah. And so like, like I have the center of me geo-referenced, so I know that I'm here at, uh, at Bauma, as a matter of fact, you know, whatever <laughs> yeah. longitude and latitude and altitude. I calibrate this now with uh, sensors I have on my arm and on my bucket. So when I, when I say, okay, I want to move this up or down, these sensors communicate to, to me as a machine where, where is now my hand in space, okay? Now, where is the hand supposed to be? Well, that's the information that comes from the model before, where I now and say, okay, I want this hand or this bucket to, to, let's say, to move some dirt. It's an operator now. I can see exactly where my fingertip is right now, where it is supposed to be in terms of the operation I'm consuming. And then it will also document what I've done. This translates into precision and no room for mistakes, right? It uh, translates into more accuracy. Some of the moving at the wrong place, overcutting, you know, it's not only it's more costly, um, it can be dangerous. Yes. Maybe there's a cable, so you want, you want to know that you're about to go too deep. Um, and it translates into less fatigue. And I think for operators that is important too, because you're not only like doing your work, you got to be careful that there aren't any other people. There is a number of things where in, in heavy machinery, you, you, you got to focus. Yes. And you do sometimes this is eight hours a day for, for like, you know, heavy tasks. So the more technology can assist you, uh, you eliminate risks, but you also get home a little bit safer and a little bit fresher. Yeah, that's perfect, Olga. Where do we go from here? So from here, I think we have now seen some of the machine control technologies. We have seen some of the, the areas where you measure the initial technologies. I think what I can show you then to close it out is some of the other technologies that exist to document what you have done. So, Holger, this is our uh, last uh, focus point. What is it all about? So now we're getting a little bit into uh, uh, a point clouds. We get a little bit into digital reality. We're getting a little bit, I think, what will be a cornerstone of the metaverse. Yeah. So you, you probably have used one of those lasers at home where you cannot measure the wall and it says yes. like it's a one meter or meter ten. You know, so imagine that and rather than having one click, one meter, let's imagine you do like one million points in a second. <laughs> so you create a 3D environment. You, you complete 3D environment and then every point in that environment is geo-referenced to any other point. Wow. So, so this point knows that I'm this far away from that point. Um, not only that, you know, you can then use cameras and you know that this is a green point and this is a red point and you create these now, uh, these digital environments, which are obviously uh, important for a number of areas. And in our case, in heavy construction, we, we like it in terms of documentation. So you have one of these that is handheld, you know, with our BLK series. So just lift it yeah. like this. You would, you would walk uh, around with this one here, and as you walk, it would measure the entire environment around you. It's very light. 
very ergonomic. It is a beautiful piece of technology. Yes, it is. This one here is obviously it's mobile. That means as you go along, it recognizes that you measured the same point multiple times. And it does that, what we call SLAM technology. It simultaneously does location and mapping. If you have a little bit more time, you can use this one here. This one you would take from one spot. You take a, a 3D picture, you take it to the next one. Now, this one works for, for over a kilometer in terms of measurements. So if you want a very detailed, very accurate um, representations of, of a digital reality, you would use one of those. And then you let your computer, then you put it together so you have the entire space. So this one here, very mobile, very fast. Um, this one here, super accurate, millions and millions of points. So the way we use this for us is we document the work that has been done, but you find some of these technologies in Hollywood where they create like some of these artificial background. We use it uh, particularly for the documentation of a site because as a contractor, if you want to get paid, it's nice to show that you have uh, made progress and it's nice to show that what you have built is what you were supposed to build so there is not reason not to get paid. Yeah, to keep uh, track on work and how things are evolving. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Excellent. You can sort of create a time capsule, yes. a digital a time timeline. capsule of, of the site. Amazing. Which where we get back to the very beginning, you remember when I yeah. showed you? So we close the loop and I think you have seen some of the most important technologies and how we use them in heavy construction. Holger, amazing technology. It was a delight talking to you. Thank you very much and I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Same to you, Katalin. Thank you very much. <laughs>